This is section 9.1, Modeling with Differential Equations. Our first objective is to understand the terminology and notation of differential equations. And when we're done, I would like you to be able to explain how you determine whether a function is a solution to a differential equation or not. Before we can do this objective, we need to all be on the same page when it comes to the vocabulary regarding differential equations. So the first vocabulary is differential equation. What is a differential equation? It is any equation that contains one or more derivatives of an unknown function. So if you look at an expression and it has an equal sign in it and a derivative somewhere, it's going to be a differential equation. The order of that differential equation is somewhat akin to the degree of a polynomial. You look for the highest derivative that is showing up anywhere in the equation, and that will be the order of the differential equation. Next, we have a solution. So just like in algebra, solutions to equations are replacements for variables that make the sentence true. A function will be a solution to a differential equation if, when you plug the function and its derivatives into the equation, you get a true statement. Next, we have what is called an initial value problem. That is a differential equation that comes with an initial condition. And what it allows you to do is to take an entire family of solutions, otherwise known as the general solution, and narrow it down to a single solution or a particular solution. Now, that initial condition or that initial value is simply an ordered pair or a point that is on the particular solution's graph. If we look at example one, the goal is simply to identify the order of each of the following differential equations. So we're looking for the derivatives and which derivatives we have, because it is the highest derivative that mandates the order. So looking at part A, we can see that there's only one term that involves a derivative, and it is the first derivative. So in this case, the order is simply one. If we look at the second one, again, we have the original function and we have the derivative, and it is the first derivative. So again, we will have an order of one. If we look at this one, we have an x and we have the second derivative of x. So the derivative that is the highest in this equation is two. So that means we'll have a second order differential equation. If we look here, we have two different derivatives. We have a third derivative and a first derivative. So again, we take the highest one and we'll have an order three for this differential equation. Lastly, we have a derivative and the function itself. So the first derivative is all we've got. So we have an order of one. With example two now, we want to prove that the following equations are solutions to the differential equation. So that means we need to find a function p whose derivative and whose function, when plugged into this, will make a true statement. So if we look over here, we can see that we have the p. We have something that we can replace the p with. But we also need to replace the derivative of that p, and we don't know what that is yet. So we go back to our prospective solution, and we take the derivative of it, and we'll move through the coefficient, hit the exponential, and then hit the power, and we end up with c times k times e to the kt. So now what we're going to do is we are going to replace the derivative with what dp dt equals. And then on the other side, we're going to replace p with what it equals. And then we're going to ask ourselves the question, are those two things equal to each other? And hopefully your algebra is good enough that you can see that indeed those are the same. So when we replaced the function and its derivatives in the differential equation, we ended up with a true statement. So this is a solution to the differential equation. Our next one, b, is a little tougher. So on this one, we have the y already, so we know we'll be able to replace the function. But what we don't have is the derivative of the y. So we're going to come back over here, and we're going to take the derivative using our quotient rule. We'll have a low d high minus a high d low over a low squared. Now, in order to test whether this is a solution or not, we need to go back to the differential equation and replace the y and the y prime 
with what they're equal to and then ask whether that is a true statement. So over on the left we'll replace with y prime. Before I do that I'm actually going to simplify it so I don't have to write that whole thing out again. I'll have an m e to the t minus an m squared e to the 2t and then I'm subtracting this negative times both of those so I'll actually be adding an m e to the t and an m squared e to the 2t. And if we look at that we can see that on the top we are going to lose the m squared e to the 2t's and I'll be left with two of those m e to the t's over a 1 plus m e to the t squared. So on the left I have now replaced y prime with what it equals and I'm going to determine whether or not that is equal to one half times the function y when I square it and subtract one. Now, now this is hopefully going to remind you of when you were proving trig identities in your pre-calculus course. When you were proving trig identities you were trying to show that the equality held true. That meant that you could not use any of the properties of equations to solve because when you apply properties of equations you are assuming that the equal sign is true. So that means we have to algebraically manipulate both sides independently until they look the same. And personally when I look at this left side it looks pretty nice. So that means most of my work is probably going to occur over here on the right. So I'm going to keep that left side written as is and I'm going to try and make the right side look the same. The first thing I notice on the left is that I have a single fraction, whereas over here I have multiple terms. So the first thing I'm going to do in my efforts to get this right side to look like this one is I'm going to get these together. I'm going to write it as a single fraction. That means I need to write this one so that it has 1 minus m e to the t quantity squared in the denominator. If I do that I will end up with a 1 plus m e to the t quantity squared minus a 1 minus m e to the t quantity squared all over that 1 minus m e to the t quantity squared. Now if I look I can see that my denominators already looking pretty good so really it's the half that's throwing me off and it's the top that should eventually equal this. So we're going to have to multiply this top out and combine our like terms in our efforts to get the right side to look like the left side. So if I multiply out the top I will have a 1 plus 2 m e to the t's plus an m squared e to the 2 t. And then I'm going to subtract this thing squared which is a 1 minus 2 m e to the t's plus an m squared e to the 2 t. And all of that is still over the 1 minus m e to the t quantity squared and we're hoping that it'll equal 2 m e to the t over a 1 plus m e to the t quantity squared. Well let's simplify here. I can see that the 1's are going to cancel. I can see that the m squared's e to the 2 t's are going to cancel and I can see that I have 2 m e to the t's plus another 2 m e to the t's. So that gives me 4 of those m e to the t's and I'm taking half of it. So I end up with two of those m e to the t's over a 1 minus m e to the t quantity squared. Notice that I have now manipulated the right hand side algebraically so that it looks like the left and I do indeed end up with a true statement. For our third and final example for this objective we want to consider the differential equation given by dy dx equals 1 half x plus y minus 1 and then we want to find the constants m and b such that this linear equation is a solution. So recall that if we are going to test whether something is a solution we need to replace both the derivatives and the unknown function with what we think the solution will be. So the unknown function is y equals mx plus b and the derivative of that unknown function is going to be m. So if I put those together into the differential equation I will have m equals one half x plus y minus 1. And our goal is to figure out what m and b are in order to make the sentence true. So if you look here see that we have two 
things involving x's. So I have a 1 half plus an m, those are multiplied by x's, and then I have things that don't involve any x's, which are b minus 1. Over on the left side, we can see that I have no x's and an m. That means the coefficient of the x's must be the same, and the constants on both sides must be the same. That will generate a system of equations where the coefficient of x equals the coefficient of x, and the constant equals the constant. If I now solve this system, I can see that m equals a negative 1 half, and b by substitution is now going to equal a positive 1 half. Now let's say we want to double check. In order to double check, we're going to write down that y is now an m, which is a negative 1 half, x plus a b, which is a positive 1 half, and the derivative of that y will now be a negative 1 half. So if I plug those into the differential equation, I'll get a negative 1 half equals a 1 half x plus the y minus a 1. Simplify, we can see that the 1 half x's are going to cancel, and a 1 half minus 1 is a negative 1 half. We end up getting something that is true, so it is indeed a solution to the differential equation.